So this video is going to be about two things, uh, composite functions and the chain rule. Now, I really want to tell you about the chain rule, but I can't do that until you know what a composite function is. So let me show you two functions and then we're going to turn them into a composite function. So here's my two functions, f of x equals 2x plus 5 and g of x equals x squared. Now, you already know how to do something like f of 2. Uh, now, that just means putting 2 into the f of x function. So 2 times 2 plus 5 is 9. Or I could say uh, g of negative 3, and that would mean putting negative 3 into g, um, which is negative 3 squared, which is, what well, also 9. Okay, so we can put uh, numbers into our functions using this function notation. You can also just put letters into your function. So if you wanted to say f of um, a, that just means put a into f. Um, so wherever x appears, you're now putting a in. Now that really doesn't change anything, it just transforms the x into an a. Uh, and you could also just, uh, you can shove anything you want in there, so if I write, um, say, f of 1 over um, a, that just means put 1 over a into wherever x was. So that's going to be 2 times 1 over a plus 5. Um, and you can sort of simplify that if you want to. Okay, so a composite function is where you take one function and shove it into another function. So f of x, there's f of x. Now if I want to shove another function into f of x, just get rid of that stuff. And in the bracket, I'm going to put the whole function, g of x. Now that just means Inside the function, shove um, x, shove the g of x function into x. All right, so f of x is 2x plus 5, and if I shove x squared in where the x used to be, I get this new function here. All right, so that's f of g of x. That's what it says. Um, now, this other composite function is the one that's going to be most useful to us. Um, g of f of x. Now what that says is take g of x, so that's x squared, and everywhere you see x, put in f of x, put f of x in there. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, so x is here, I'm going to put 2x plus 5 in for x. So there's my x, 2x plus 5, I'm going to square it. And I could expand that if I want to, but that's the important bit. All right. Those are what composite functions are. It's a function inside of another function. A function inside of another function. All right, so there's our lesson on composite functions. We really only need to do that lesson on composite functions so we can talk about the chain rule because I'm going to use the word composite functions when I'm talking about the chain rule. So time to talk about the chain rule now. Here's an example. It's probably best to start with an example because it is a little bit complicated. Um, now, why did I talk about composite functions? Uh, because this is a composite function. This says y equals 3x plus 4, which is a function, uh, to the power of 20. And I can sort of split that into its uh, composite functions or its individual functions. So uh, I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to let 3x plus 4 equal u. Okay, so that's the important part here. I've looked inside the function and I've seen another function. Now, if I let 3x plus 4 equal u, that means that y, I can put a little therefore there, y equals u to the power of 20. Okay, so because u is that, and that was there, now u is there, u to the 20. And I can also write over here now, uh, I'm going to write that u equals 3x plus 4. Okay, now the chain rule, the key to it is saying, okay, if there was a composite function, which there is a composite function here, I can break them up into their two individual functions, and then I can find the derivative of both of them. Now, the derivative of this, watch this notation, the derivative of y with respect to u, dy du, not dx, because there's a u in this one. Okay, uh, now the derivative of uh, u to the power of 20, you should know that that's 20u to the 19. Bring the power out the front, etc., etc. Now, also, I'm going to find the derivative of u. All right. So, 
uh, the derivative of u, the function is called u, um, with respect to x, du dx. All right, so the derivative of that is just uh, 3. All right, now, finally, the, the rule, the chain rule. The chain rule says um, that the derivative, I'm going to do this in a different color because it's kind of the, it's kind of the rule. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to, now watch how I write it, uh, dy dx, and those du's are going to appear here. Okay, um, it's really clever. It says the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. And you can see that's kind of going to work because those du's are going to cancel out and I'm just going to be left with dy dx. So that is what the chain rule states. That is the chain rule. And I can use it now in my specific question. Uh, okay, the derivative of y with respect to u is 20u to the 19. And uh, the derivative of u with respect to x is 3. So now I'm left with 30u to the 19. And I can say that that's dy, the derivative of y, with respect to x. Now, if you're paying attention, you're going to look at that and say, wait a minute, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 60u to the 19? That doesn't make sense uh, because it's the derivative of y with respect to x, not the derivative of y with respect to u. So we need to get rid of that u, and we can get rid of the u because we know from the original bit that the u is actually 3x plus 4. So finishing off, we can say that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 60 bracket 3x plus 4 to the power of 19. Okay, that is the chain rule. Uh, it draws upon our knowledge of composite functions, so we can spot that a function is inside another function. We find the derivative of the function inside there. We find the derivative of the function that's kind of outside there. We multiply them together, and then we sub back in our original thing. I'm going to do one more. So here's our next one, a little bit more complicated, but same idea. Y equals this to the power of negative 2. So it's this to the power of something else. This bit's a function, and it's inside of another function, inside of something being raised to something. So I can say, let um, 4x cubed minus 5x equal u. That's a good start to a question like this. So now I can break it into its component parts. So I can say that if that's true, therefore, y equals all of that to u, u to the negative 2. And I can also say that u is equal to that, because I just said it. All right, now I can derive both of those. Uh, the derivative of y with respect to u is equal to um, negative 2u decreased to the power by 1, negative 3. And then the derivative of u with respect to x is equal to 12x squared minus 5. Finally, and watch how I do this, because this is a good way to remember how to sort of set up your formula, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to dy dx times the thing that you said the thing was equal to there. Okay, so pushing those bits together, we'll get something like dy du, which is negative 2u to the negative 3, times du dx, which is 12x squared minus 5. Okay, um, what to do from here? So that uh, u is actually not u, it's uh, 4x cubed minus 5x. So now I can say it's negative 2 times uh, 4x cubed minus 5x bracket to the negative 3 um, times I need to be a bit careful here because I'm actually timesing all of that, times 12x squared minus 5. Okay, um, I guess because all of that, you can see that bit there is being raised to a negative power, I guess I can finish it off by saying negative 2 bracket, that's not a negative power, that's a positive power, all over.
to the 3, because that was a negative 3, and I can sort of move that to the bottom. Probably not advisable, because the original question had a negative power, so my, my answer can probably have a negative power as well, so that's probably enough. Okay, um, that's composite functions and two examples of how to use the chain rule.